So where is Dogecoin going to be? Everyone wants to know if it's going to hit a dollar. Is it going to hit 70 cents, 80 cents, 90 cents? I want to talk about that. I'm actually going to show you. I've been learning charting. So I thought this would be a good way kind of to show some of the things that I've learned about, uh, you know, price action and, and really reading trends. And we'll see if I'm right. Right at the end of this, I basically have a prediction of where Dogecoin is going. So stay tuned for that. But I'm going to walk through and talk about some of the things that I've learned in in reading charts uh, so i'm gonna throw that up on the screen now and uh, well there's no bs in this video we'll go ahead and jump right into it i do want to say though if you appreciate this content uh if you've been following me for a while or if you've been watching my videos for a while uh, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button i appreciate it help a brother out hit the like button it helps me out with the youtube algorithm go ahead and smash that mother uh highly appreciate each and every one of you so let's go ahead and jump into this chart You'll see a few things here. I'm on trading view right now asking me for ads. Um, and really what I want to focus on is, is what we're seeing here with these lines that we've drawn, right? This is a trend that kind of I've identified. And this is, I think, something that is repeating itself. And, and ultimately, we, we, we have an uptrend. So let's take a step back here. If you're not familiar with, with kind of trending um, or trading and, and the way that we identify trends, uh, as traders, uh, there's a few things that we want to look for. One, so one is uh, the more that something, a, a trend reoccurs or that price action reoccurs, occurs, right? So if we see a pattern more than once, uh, if we see it three times, four times, every each occurrence uh, basically strengthens the signal of that pattern. Interestingly enough, we're only seeing this happen twice. Uh, I started to kind of identify this right when we started to dip here. Now you see my cursor on the screen here. This looks like May 7th. But you'll see here that we have almost these two M shapes, right? We'll be very light with our terminology. Uh, so we basically have this push up here to around, uh, what is this, 43 cents. It pulled back what we call retraced back here to 24. Uh, pushed up again, right, as, as more people bought the dip. And then there was another sell-off here. It kind of created this bowl, this bowl, bowl, not bowl, bowl pattern here. Uh, through here, it, it accumulated here. We see volume dropped off. We see volume on the bottom of this chart here. So this bottom part of this, this screen, if you're not familiar with this, is the volume on that day. So heavy volume going into the push up. Volume starts to fall off as there's a sell off and consolidation is met with low volume. Volume increases again as we start to push up Price again this is right here where we got right up to 70 cents uh, right around May 5th. There's a sell off, right? Uh, you know, kind of the rule of round numbers there. We people hit the price target. There's always going to be a huge sell off, by the way, anytime you hit a new price target. So 70 cents, 80 cents, 90 cents, a dollar. There are going to be huge sell offs at each one. You should just expect this. Uh, there might be sell offs in between, but you're definitely going to see sell offs as people basically hit their goals uh, for whatever their buy in was. So it pulls back, it retraces here, back to 51, pushes up again, uh, 75, uh, kind of crazy, and then pulls back here. So what's interesting is I started drawing this trend actually a few days ago, uh, and, and really, this is what my thesis is, right? So I'll talk about my thesis, and then we'll come back and kind of do some measurements on the screen here. If we were to look uh, maybe further out into, you know, the future here, and based off of this price action, I think we're going to end up at a future price of around 115. Okay, Forrest, how did you end up with 115? That's pretty crazy. That's actually over a dollar. Let me show you what I'm basing this off, off of. And this is really just based off of my like amateurist learnings of, of charting. Uh, typically, I'm a swing trader. I'm trying to get into day trading. So I've been practicing kind of reading charts, identifying trends, looking for support and all of these different things. I'm not gonna dive into most of that here. This is just something I think that's really prevalent right now because Dogecoin is hot. I've been trading uh, living F out of Dogecoin. I've basically been accumulating. So I actually sold here right around uh, the top here. I bought in, I didn't, I didn't sell exactly at the peak or buy in right at the bottom. That's actually really tough to do. But I did sell uh, near the top, and then I bought in near the low. And I've been doing the same thing. Uh, this is really powerful because I've, I've been able to accumulate more and more Doge, basically with a thesis, a long-term thesis, 
that this is going to continue to go up to a dollar and so i'm just getting more doge for free essentially uh which is pretty cool because i've got a lot, a lot of other stuff going on in my life right now and i'm kind of strapped for cash and i'm not trying to sell any of my other investments um to get into dogecoin right now so suffice to say let's let's look back at this trend and let's let's actually do some measurements so if we look here after the second peak i'm using the measuring tool in trading view right now we can see that it pulled back right around 61 percent uh, so there's kind of this general rule that things will typically retrace anywhere from you know 30 to 60 percent it's not exactly 30 to 60 but let's just say 30 to 60 percent of their last value so it pulled back 30 to 60 percent interesting let's look here if we look at where the may 8th rally ended and we use the measuring tool again and we draw a square down to where we are today we're at 52 percent so if we, we match that trend completely we could actually expend it expect it to come back down to this price of right around 30 cents so that was my initial prediction i actually put a tweet out the other day that i predicted that this was going to come down to 30 cents it may have found some early support so it may not actually bottom out all the way down to 30 but if this trend kind of matches its previous trend uh we'll see that it comes down to 30 and you're probably saying force well why would it do the same thing like what is all this stuff kind of seems like you know foo foo or magic price action has to do with psychology if you look at these charts and think about what it means and i kind of touched on this earlier right so people come in we hit some target some unforeseen number and people want to take their gains so a bunch of people sell out other people see that it's starting to crash uh, so people who are holding long that have you know paper hands also sell and that crashes the price so you have people who are taking gains mixed in with people who are you know maybe a little shaky handed that causes a crash and then you have people go huh maybe those people who took in their gains like me and others say okay there's a new low entry point i'm going to get back in because i'm long on this in the first place i just wanted to take some money so it pushes back up then we see something similar again people take their gains there's so many different ways and that's just one scenario right one plausible scenario but we actually know this is happening because there are tons of wells in dogecoin a lot of people see this as a bad thing i see it i think it's actually great when wells sell large portions of their portfolio especially if the coin recovers i think ultimately that we want many more wallets in the space we want more participants and less wells and if wells getting out the earlier that they get out the better uh, I, I see nothing wrong with that it sucks if you're you know someone who wanted you know to, to sell and there's a huge dip but ultimately if you're looking out far and you think that this is something that can actually be used long term or will maintain its its kind of internet or meme power long term it actually doesn't matter I think one of the interesting things and something that people don't consider about this is that the, the number of participants and the daily volume volume is much more important than somebody who's just holding a ton of coins and not using them because they're essentially not participating in the market. Uh, so that's neither here nor there. It's kind of like a counter point or, or thesis to this, but I really don't think that whales in general are that big of a deal. And I'm really not too concerned about them selling. I think that them selling will drive the price down, obviously, but I think that's a good thing. Anyways, let's get back to measuring this. So look at my measuring tool. That brings us down to uh, 30%. Uh, but let's look at our gains. So if we look at the bottom of the dip here to our next bullish uh, run here, we're up 331%. Let's just say 330%. Okay, so if we do that same price action, you're going to see where I got my price before. So we start from the bottom here of 30 cents right i basically said we we're gonna start at 30 cents and we pull up to holy moly if i can grab this tool if we pull up to thanks to the power editing well, i probably won't edit that out because it's super late uh if i want to go up 330 percent that's gonna bring me out to uh what is this uh pull this down a dollar 30. so maybe a little bit higher than i think I think that because the dollar barrier is pretty significant, I don't know if we're going to hit a dollar thirty. I think we'll meet some resistance here. There's going to be heavy selling pressure as we hit a dollar. The point is, though, is that this pattern. I, I think the the fact that we're seeing this occur twice again, right? We're seeing a very very similar set of scenario, volume, everything is 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 looking similar here. I'm, I haven't even plotted here, you know, the 50 day averages and all that stuff. Uh, we could add that into 
kind of just want to do like a simple overview of the price action here. I think that this is a strong indicator uh, that Dogecoin has a strong future. So I'm going to stop recording my screen. Um, but really, I, I think what this means, you know, for us as investors, and there's a few things here is, is I kind of want to put this out as, you know, my investment thesis or what I think the price is going to do and see if I'm right. Uh, I've been reading uh, technical analysis of the financial markets, kind of diving into day trading. My goal is to eventually day trade and make anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars a day and just do that kind of long term. I think it'll be cool. And, and obviously there's tons of other things I could do from there. I have the capital now to actually like make a good attempt at that, uh, that capital being a couple hundred thousand dollars. Uh, but, oh, there's actually one more thing I did want to show you here. Uh, and that is my uh, crypto portfolio. So I'll probably just throw that up on the screen or Dogecoin as it stands today. I have 233,000 Doge, uh, though, uh, right now in my uh, Robinhood wallet. Don't necessarily recommend Robinhood for your wallet, but hey, that's where it is. It's easiest. I, I had the, the Doge that I had in there skyrocketed. And at this point, I can't really take it out without, you know, tax implications and things like that. I can't just transfer it. So it's in uh, Robinhood. Yeah. Sorry if, if you don't like that. Uh, but what is it going back to what does it mean? So obviously you, if you're watching this video, you're, you're thinking, you know, when should you get in? Uh, I would go back to, you know, scroll back in this video and look at that chart there. Uh, if you agree with me and if you think that this is something that makes sense, if you think that this trend is going to continue, then I think we'll easily at least get back up to 70 cents, 80 cents. We'll definitely hit some new all time highs. And I think right now is a great entry. I think you could get in anywhere. Uh, you know, under or around 50 cents and getting up to, you know, 70, 80 or, or 90 cents. I mean, those are some huge gains. If you put in a hundred thousand dollars and it goes up, you know, 50%, you just made $50,000. You don't even have to go for the 330% push. You can essentially double your money, assuming that this trend is correct. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy who makes a lot of money on the internet. So do your own research. And I guess, you know, do this if you feel like, uh, I may or, or, or may not be right. I guess if you feel like I'll be right. Uh, but in any case, hope you like the style of this video. I'm going to try and do more of these. I'm actually considering maybe switching up my channel, doing the, you know, long-term analysis or the, the individual stock analysis videos it takes a ton of effort. Uh, so I think I'm going to scale or not really scale back, but, you know, shift more into kind of just more of these real type of almost vlog or, or chatty type of videos where I just talk about the things that I'm like really doing right now. Uh, I still do invest in stocks heavily and do constant research. It's just turning that into a condensed format with my current workload is kind of honestly just too much. It takes way too much time to take you know, the hours of research that I do and condense that into a format that is digestible for folks for, for folks on video. I like to actually show content and kind of like the source of research material and editing all of that in takes a lot of time. And then on the flip side, it's like, well, I could just talk about it. Uh, but then if I'm just talking about it, it kind of seems like fake. It, it doesn't seem, it's not the type of product that I want to deliver. And, you know, ultimately I do care a lot about the type of content. I know everybody has different thoughts on this, but I, I very, I care very much about the end product of these videos and what it could mean for somebody who's watching it. And ultimately the types of ways that they, they might receive that. So in any case, um, yeah, just doing the YouTube thing. I appreciate each and every one of you for stopping by. Uh, if you have questions or if you want that book, I will put that down in the description. But until next time, my name is Forrest. I invest in stuff you should do. See you in the next one.